Hi there. Welcome to listeners from across the globe. My name is Allison Nune, and this is Best Damn Reality, a new podcast intending to help bridge the spiritual and material worlds. Each week, I invite you to join me and to suspend all preconceived notions, to open your minds and your hearts to seeing everything from a much vaster perspective. Should you be enticed enough, please also consider visiting me on my YouTube channel and on my business Facebook page, both under the name Allison Nune. Now, sit back, relax, and enjoy the journey. Episode 11, Less is More. Welcome back, listeners. We're going to jump right in this week. It is Friday, September 11th, 2020. This recording is being done in Sarasota, Florida. Before we jump in, I do want to mention a minor detail, but from last week's episode, I definitely mixed together two separate memories of seeing the feature of last week's episode, an old friend named Christian Habel. I saw him perform with Josh Groban at Key Arena in Seattle, Washington on two different occasions, and I mixed together my memories of both of those of both of those times of seeing him because then I also saw him perform here in Tampa as well. So I saw them perform three times in a four, four or five year, four year period. And so I definitely was mixing some of the memories, the detailed memories, especially the two Seattle uh, concerts and the experiences we had after the concerts with him backstage. I was mixing those memories and I clarified it uh, in my YouTube version where I do, I released the same audio each week on my YouTube channel. The only difference is I add slides to the whole hour plus episode, and then I give a written summary as well. And I made the uh, adjustment in all the written summaries, actually, whether you access this through Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, or YouTube. Uh, But I did mix two different memories of seeing him together. Um, So I wanted to make that note generally. But definitely last week was represented... I would say one of the strongest all around connections, um, from my life in terms of evaluating it on these following criteria. One, the length of time I've known this gentleman, Christian Habel, I don't have, again, we're not close present day. We haven't been close in a long time, but our connection that we once had goes back very far in this life. Third grade is when I first moved out of the city of Detroit, out to the suburbs, to Plymouth. I met him in elementary school at Farrand Elementary School. So our memory, our connections go way back in this life. He also, I would say, if I had to think of all the people, again, how we measure quote unquote success, really, I believe it comes down to your happiness, right? And your contentment and happiness and fulfillment. Um, But we are still in a mainstream world, although it's shifting right now. We're still at a time where certain external things definitely are seen as more successful than other ex if somebody doesn't have certain external things. Christian has a hugely externally successful life, without doubt. Worldwide musician, uh, professional, big time, huge musician performing with you know, big names, Billy Joel, Barbra Streisand, Elton John, Josh Groban, across the globe. A huge Broadway presence when he lived in New York. Um, Also presence, huge presence within Hollywood on movie scores, Grammys. So we're talking a very big successful on the outside in that bigger world. A very, somebody that has touched ground in a very big way physically. And that was one of my criteria of these first 12 episodes picking people and experiences from my life that I felt potentially had 
in their own network the potential to reach the greatest number of people in an effort to spread this idea of this project called Ripple 2020 and really all the layers of what that project represents. Now, we're going to delve into Ripple 2020 a lot more beginning in episode 13. These first 12 episodes were sort of my unique marketing plan, right? So when I get to the stage of the project being at this bare minimum point of being ready to tell people about more directly and asking directly for people's support and to consider passing it through their own networks. That, you know, I'm not there yet, but the project is also intended to be very much co-creative, right? But when I get to that place, I will be reaching out to at least one personality from each of these first 12 episodes very directly as a way to uniquely market and spread the word of this project. So Christian represents a really big, big potential for me. It remains to be seen if he reacts to the project at all, if he connects with me in any way, he very well may not. But he's also a perfect segue into this week's topic uh, and the personality around whom this week's episode. And, And really, there aren't As compared to previous episodes, I don't have the magnitude or depth of experience with this young woman directly. I lived with and was close to, for years, her older sister. Her older sister, who happens to be a member of the Kosovo Society, which again was featured in episode 9 and also has been mentioned in a number of the other earlier episodes. So I, you know, I don't know her very well. However, she was selected to be part of this first group of recordings because one, the magnitude and depth of how I did connect with her sister. Two, the very positive, in, you know, Uh, inspiration she served for me, most notably musically, and I'll get more into that in a bit. And three, again, we're looking for people with far-reaching capabilities. And she, if you remember when I first introduced all the episodes in episode one, she is a radio DJ that at the time was in uh, the Minneapolis market, Minneapolis, Minnesota, Cincinnati, Ohio, and Atlanta, Georgia. I haven't been on Facebook in almost two months, but I think she recently switched out of one of those markets and took on a different market, but I'm not 100% certain on that. And I also know that tomorrow is her 33rd birthday. Um, And again, these are all little synchronicities that I likely won't expand upon in this episode, but I'm just dropping them here as little points of information, if you will. So this woman is somebody that I was hoping also, just like the rest, that once presented with this idea of Ripple, that she'd be willing to utilize in some way her vast influence uh, with listeners literally throughout the country to potentially consider spreading the word about it. And what she represents, most notably her relationship Her whole job as a radio DJ is surrounded around music. And the few times that I interacted with her, she was still a high school student. And I saw her perform in a couple of her high school productions down in Englewood, Florida. And it was in that capacity that I remember she first, again, as I mentioned in last week's episode, I love the performing arts. It's one of the reasons I I gravitated also to, you know, television productions and film productions. I just, I love creativity, co-creativity, coming together as groups, artistically expressing, telling stories, you know, every aspect from lighting and scenery and character development. And in, in the case of plays, the fact that it's live and in the moment is just something that has always really resonated deeply with me and inspired me. And it's something, music is something that I very much 
plan and hope to return to in big ways here in the very near future. So that is the aspect of this young woman. That's one of the aspects that I really sat with as I prepared to kind of talk in today's episode. Uh, a little bit, since it, I won't really be able to share a specific story with her, it's more about what her energy represents to me in what I have felt without really, you know, without really knowing her very well, just what I've experienced and felt as an observer of her when I was young, when she was younger and when I was younger, and then now from afar you know, through the mediums like Facebook, which I'm on very minimally. So, but she represents a number of things. One is the power of the feminine energy and the return of the divine feminine that I believe is part of the shift taking place at all on our planet right now. Is a balancing out, if you will, of masculine and feminine energy where the scales have just been heavily, heavily weighted and tipped towards the masculine energy expression through men and women. But one of the glaring, obvious omissions energetically in mass, in our mass reality has been valuing at the same level, at the same degree, some of the softer and, and, and more feminine aspects of what it is to be a human being. And this young woman always represented that to me from the time that I observed her when she was just in high school. Very strong personality, but very balanced, in my opinion, with her masculine and feminine energy. She also, as I just mentioned, represents music. Song, dance, music, artistic creation, And that is, I think, the real universal language of our planet is through music. In fact, I remember being in Seattle once and I took this little private, like in somebody's home, little workshop. And I remember the person guiding that workshop shared something and said, the closest that the non-physical can get to the physical world is through sound. Or vice versa, the closest the physical world can get to the non-physical world is through sound. Sound and music and song and the uniqueness of our voices and the movement of our bodies. I, I just think it is a untapped means by which we can not only experience tremendous amounts of healing, but also tremendous amounts of deep connection through music. And if you talk to people who are musicians or even fans of music who go, I've got a couple of people I work with in the Ironman circuit, one of my favorites, one guy for certain who I've been working with now for six years, he's a huge music guy. And the connection that he has through music What, you know, what people connect to through music, I have found is deeper, if you will, than sort of connecting on the surface level in other more mundane ways, like connecting through work. Um, You know, I just, I feel like music takes us somewhere, at least has the potential to take us somewhere, and is very much a universal way to connect as humans. And again, That is what I'm intending to have comprise a much greater percentage of my own life here in the very near future. And finally, she represents, again, on a general level, her age, turning 33 tomorrow. In my post-awakening, now this is one of these Allison reads. This is not scientifically. I haven't conducted any formal experiment that can prove this, but what I have experienced, observed and experienced in the past 10 years since my awakening, and, and that has meant, you know, taking everything in my life and examining it and experiencing it in these unprecedented ways, just really, really deep ways where I'm you know, feeling things from all perspectives and going as deep with my experiences as possible. And also combining that 
with what I've been taking in from other people's perspectives of the spiritual times in which we're living, the spiritual shift and, and what that means. What is, you know, what is consciousness? What is the awakening? What is, you know, what is that to different people? And how do individuals take this greater truth and allow that to come through their unique vessel and express it through their unique vessel. That's what I've been taking in very regularly now for over 10 years through books, through YouTube channels of people, through readings, through workshops, um, through music. Uh, and what every time I listen and feel and experience somebody else's take on these times, it helps me clarify you know, what resonates for me? What feels like that greater truth? What, you know, sharing a perspective with somebody that feels like it's coming from love or is it still in that fear frequency? And just really playing with the energy in, in a lot, in a way that's just more inclusive and vaster and more open, not any longer from trying to judge any one particular feel of energy or experience of energy, but really in an effort to understand, you know, what, what does this shift mean? I know I feel it. It feels true. It feels like what I've been seeking for this entire life, but what the hell does it really mean? And what does it look like? And how do I live it? And how do I reconcile the mainstream world that for so long was so opposite of all these things that are calling me. And what I would argue is that her generation, the ones that are, you know, 35 and under, I would argue that they are coming to these vessels and choosing to be alive on this planet. We're all choosing. We've all chosen to be alive in form on this planet at this time for much higher reasons. And yes, our souls chose this. Now, sidebar here, that is without doubt one of, if not the biggest underlying assumption of all of my work is that our souls, the greater essence of us, chose these vessels, chose these personalities, chose our parents and our, our parents' souls chose us. We had like a, a meeting in heaven, if you will, before we all chose to incarnate down here in form. The trick is that up until present day now that this is also shifting, part of the deal is you forget this as soon as you're born in form. And really the awakening more than anything is simply a remembering a remembering of what we already know, what we already are. And so I believe, and, and, this, and this is also kind of tricky because I actually believe that this is a greater truth whether or not, for everybody, it's not one of those things where, you know, I, I mean, you can absolutely choose not to see life that way, absolutely choose to believe that this is it, this is the one and only shot, but, and I'm not going to go too far off on this tangent, but I actually believe that that is in fact a greater truth with a capital T, that we really do choose these experiences. And that fact is a game changer because now there is really no blaming. There is no blaming once you get on into form, especially when you get into your adulthood and you're able to start making choices and decisions for yourself and you're outside of the direct influence of your home, of your parents or somebody else making those decisions for you. We chose these life circumstances at a deep soul level for our soul to grow and expand. And that, you no longer then can say, well, I didn't choose my parents. I didn't choose my family. I didn't choose this. Yeah, you did. We all did. And when, if, and when you can get to the point of accepting that as universal fact, that is a game changer. 
totally different world will manifest. A totally different reality will manifest with a group of human beings believing that as the greater truth versus the opposite. A group of human beings believing this is the one all be all shot of existence. Okay. So definitely more on soul planning will come in further future episodes, but I needed to drop that point because this young woman represents that age group, that under 35, these souls came where they would be that age, still young enough in their physical vessels as this shift in consciousness and this evolutionary shift in human in what it is to be human, which is taking place right now. This is happening. Those souls chose to be in these vessels at that, at this time. And in, in that sense, I believe it causes them to almost be pre-wired. It's like they don't, they're not, they've not had the same magnitude or length of time of conditioning that my generation and certainly generations beyond mine have had to undo in order to be ready, if you will, for the shift. The generations 35 and under in mass, those guys and gals are coming pre-wired where they're ready for this shift. You don't have to convince them or prove nearly as much to them as a collective now, not individually necessarily, but as a collective. They are much, they they much have a much easier time receiving some of these seemingly out there perspectives that I have that represent reality and what reality can be. And I think that is exactly why Iron Man fell in my lap as well. Because if I had to highlight one particular age group, the group of kids I've worked with the most in the past six years are the ages between 22 and, and, and like young 30s, not even 35. 22 to 32, 33, that is the age group on the ground putting on Iron Man events represented by far when you look at an entire Iron Man crew. If you were going to do all the math of it, the highest percentage is in that age group. So I've been around and working very intimately and very closely. The Ironman work week, 80 plus hour work weeks, 24 plus hour days in for race day, very intimate. You really get to know people when you work in that sort of job. And to be around that age group, that is what I'm forming And I will admit, it is a generalization based on my own experience that in mass, I'm not saying that a lot of those, the folks I've worked with have the same spiritual awareness and are seeing the world in the way that I am. Very few of them are. But what I'm saying is their collective energy just deals with change a lot more easily. They're not, they don't even hesitate. They're, they've been brought up, their entire existence has been ADHD because there's, they've just been trained and grown up with, you know, thousands of things going on at the same time, much, you know, that's their normal. And as such, they're just a very different wiring than people even just, a, you know, five to 10 years older than them in my experience and observation. And she is right there in that generation. And my hope is that as I roll out this idea and get it more developed, sure, my hope is, is that not just this young woman, but my hope is that, I mean, I'm trying to paint this picture for every single human being that wants to see what a world of love and cooperation and thriving is. I mean, that's my goal is for anybody and everybody who really feels they want to see and live in a world like that. That's what I'm trying to portray and paint here. But she is very much smack dab in that age group where if I had to pick, that's where I think a lot of people are going to begin. The The people that resonate most with what I'm trying to do, if I had to make a prediction, one of my many hypotheses is 
um, hi, one of my many hypotheses um, includes the one that believes that generation is going to be one of the first ones in mass to kind of really see it and roll with it. And clearly, that's what I'm hope, hoping for with this young woman. Now, I want to go on a little bit. That's pretty much the extent to which I can speak of her and my relationship with her. Again, she is a very powerful soul through my observation and my feeling of her energy and has been since she was a young woman, much more self-aware and courageous to shine her authentic self than I was at that age for sure. There's a certain level of, uh, you know, oh gosh, I don't even know what, what it is. When, when you're an artist and when you put yourself out there singing and dancing and acting and expressing artistically, it def, you cannot be connected attached is the better word. You cannot be attached to how people, any one individual or even any group out there may or may not receive your work, receive your performance. And obviously there's a, you know, there's a a great spectrum there. I mean, if you're clearly a good singer, good dancer, good artist, it's a lot easier for people to accept that that's what you're doing. But there are a lot of people who refrain from these things simply because we're made to believe, hey, unless you're good at something right off the bat, especially as you get older, you know, we're definitely not encouraged to continue taking on new skill sets. And, you know, it's funny, look at with children, you constantly at least when I was a kid, you always heard of kids. Most kids get parents try to expose their kids, if they're able to, to, you know, a number of different things. They probably try to get them into some sort of physical activity, uh, some something musically if they can, and they just try to expose their children to different things. Um, in my day, it was piano lessons. Um, and then when band would start in middle school, usually kids had to learn and pick up some sort of instrument, uh, the recorder in, in elementary school. So it's funny when you look at adults, how rarely you come across an adult that said, oh yeah, I started taking drum lessons or I started taking trumpet lessons or singing lessons. And I find that again, that's one of the many, many, many aspects of getting older in our present world, in our present society, that I think is part of the reason it's killed the soul and, and why we've got some of the disarray and the magnitude of disarray that we do with our human, you know, at all across the planet, whether you're talking about mental illnesses, whether you're talking about high levels of depression and anxiety, whether you're talking about increasing rates of suicide or just plain lack of fulfillment and, you know, just going through the motions like a robot paying bills. That is not what our souls came here to be and do. We came here to keep exploring ourselves in all these different ways, whether it's musically, whether it's artistically, through painting, through acting, through, you know, just experiencing different types of jobs instead of staying in one set thing for 25, 30, 40 years. And it's not to say, not bagging on anybody for whom, you know, they've enjoyed and loved a career in one set thing. That is wonderful and fantastic. I'm never, ever trying to dissuade anybody. I mean, I just want everybody to have the opportunity to find that for themselves. And again, in my 44 plus years, my experience has been that there have been far, far more people just kind of going through the motions than people that are genuinely, you can tell that their spirit and their souls are just alive and constantly growing and expanding. And I would argue that the latter is what our world is presently and quickly shifting into. 
it's quickly making the shift, although the process has been long underway for decades, arguably for even hundreds of years, if you want to think of it as an evolutionary thing. We have constantly been slowly evolving to getting to the popping point that we find ourselves at in, in the moment right now, towards the end here of 2020. And I think that going into the Iron Man week, which next weekend's episode is going to be entirely about Iron Man, and more specifically, I'm going to present very specific ideas that could be implemented once we return, if we return, to doing events here once this COVID experience is behind us. And what I'm also beginning to shift the episodes towards is pointing out and creating these opportunities for people to make a direct choice to support. In this case, I'm hyper-focusing it on Ripple 2020. And I'm laying out and purposely making it as simple as possible for anyone and everyone to get their energy to be part of the co-creation of this little example of how we can be doing things differently. And (laughs) my guess is, based on experience, as simple as I'm making it, you can't get much simpler than only asking for a dollar. That's the simplest. And the, the, the most I'm going to ask of anybody is a dollar from them individually and to be willing to spread it to their network. And if I had to say, I would say even if you just spread it to four people, a dollar and think about four individuals that you know in some capacity in your life that would likely resonate with this idea even just a little bit. You cannot get any simpler than that. But my guess is that it will still be a little bit challenging to get that from people in my world. Again, this is based on very hard lessons that I learned when I first launched things seven and a half years ago. Because what I learned, twofold here. One, and I mentioned this in last week's episode, or I think two weeks ago. We fear what we don't understand. We fear what we don't know. And everything that I'm trying to be an example of and that I'm talking to, especially as I let myself get even freer with it and go even higher in the tree, is new. It's a brand new perspective at looking at things. It's taking the same pieces of any one puzzle, but it's assembling them in a different way. The same colors are being used here to paint a picture, but it's a very different type of picture that's being portrayed and that I'm trying to share in the ideas and the perspectives. And it's so different, for real it's different, that... It's a lot of times people, it, it's threatening. And as I've mentioned in episode nine, it's especially going to be threatening to people that have done really well in our systems and in our mainstream world. And that classification tends to categorize most of my network. Most of my network at present has done very well in the present mainstream world. So I was not prepared for how hard these lessons were, but I learned very quickly seven and a half years ago that simply going after making my own life, let alone something beyond my life, based on such vastly different ideas and perspectives and perceptions was threatening to many people. And what I'm trying to encourage all of us to consider is doing the work to get ourselves to a place where we can genuinely support somebody who is clearly following love in what they're doing. 
even if we don't see it that way, we don't agree with them, we don't see it as something that's, you know, that we're passionate about or that we love, but in recognizing passion and love and heart energy and being willing and able to learn how to support that, that's the part of somebody that you're supporting. And being able to support somebody who 98% of them you might not agree with or see the world and life in the way that they do. But learning how to be able to align to the 2% that you do see similarly to them. Where you are aligned. Learning how to genuinely align with what we can collectively agree upon, as opposed to continuing what I feel is all (laughs) that the masses are still being encouraged to do, which is to choose one side or another to argue and fight about why this side is better than the other side. If we can just for argument's sake, agree that everything has equal validity and that we are never, ever, ever going to get everyone to agree on everything. If we just keep it really simple, love and honesty, love and honesty, don't lie and don't do harm and follow the love. And Ripple 2020 is sort of, this is where the title of today's episode, less is more. If I had to pick four adjectives to describe Ripple 2020, Simple, direct, honest, transparent, and truly going to be an effort where I think it's pretty undeniable where the passion, the commitment, and the fact that I'm coming from the heart. I've got, for those that need to see proof, I have seven and a half years on my YouTube channel of me singing this song and talking about this. And sharing some of the same stories and same ways of even describing some of these ideas. I know that I am presenting something that can provide somebody an equal amount for their dollar. You're going to get your dollar's worth if you choose to support this idea. The, The hiccup, if you will, the speed bump, the potential of people and why wouldn't you... Because if you go through my YouTube channel, even if you just focus on these first 11 podcasts, I've said it before, I'm on everybody's team and nobody's team. So while there may have been some episodes or parts of some episodes that you are thrilled and love and you're like, oh yeah, I get it. I feel that. That's exactly, I've never heard it said that way, but that's exactly, I I get that. Likely, there are also a handful of things or at least one or two things that I've said where you're like, yeesh, I'm not so sure about that. I definitely don't agree with her on that. I definitely haven't had that experience. This isn't really relevant to my life and the story and the journey that I've had. But if you can give me the benefit of the doubt, if we could learn to give one another the benefit of the doubt, and just find the smallest, simplest of ways to align on what we can agree upon and to trust that feeling that comes in the heart, the resonance that you feel in your heart. And my experience has been that much like with anything in the physical It takes practice. It takes rehearsing. It takes repetition. It's why a lot of times in the early part of my episodes, I might repeat the same thing with different words that I expressed in a previous episode. First and foremost, that's because right now, I very much could have people who are stumbling upon any one episode as their first one. And I want each episode to be able to stand on its own. But it's also very consciously being done, the repetition, because you have to keep hearing it repeated. The way in which we are being 
guided right now energetically. The planet, the energy consciousness is shifting this way, whether you want to see it, agree, believe in it, it's happening. It's happening and it's affecting all of us. And it's a great thing because you don't have to agree to see it. But if it is something that resonates with you, if you really do want to experience a different version of earth, more love, less fear, more thriving, less barely surviving, more happiness and fulfillment, less depression and anxiety, more cooperation and generosity and selflessness as opposed to greed and selfishness, more expansion of becoming greater versions of ourselves and learning new things right up until the day we take our last breath from these bodies. That option, that opportunity is present right now, but you have to choose it. And I'm telling you from direct experience, despite it being upon my awakening, clear as can be that that was what always made sense to me. That was the version of earth that I wanted to live in and be a part of. It took every bit and continues to take work every single day to consciously break the patterns of judgment and criticism and limitations of the world we've all been conditioned within. It takes work and repetition. And my biggest influence for me that really helped me was somebody called Abraham, an energy called Abraham Hicks. A woman named Esther Hicks channels, basically she, if, if, if you understand what the concept of channeling is, a higher energy, higher consciousness that refers to itself as Abraham comes through her vessel, her character, her personality known as Esther Hicks. And again, I believe that she really does sort of surrender herself and what comes through. She uses stories from Esther's life, but the intelligence that's coming through her is very much coming from beyond her personality. And when I first was introduced to Abraham, I listened to Abraham all the time for the better part of two years. It was the first time I heard somebody talking about reality, talking about life, talking about what it looks like to live this higher perspective. Now, after I remember exactly when I stopped I still listen to Abraham every once in a while, but it was actually December 21st, 2012. I won't go off on the specific story, but there was a very specific fluke, crazy thing that happened when all of a sudden a daily, I used to get a daily email from Abraham Productions or publications or whatever, and I didn't unsus- unsubscribe. I didn't consciously make the choice. And all of a sudden on December 21st, 2012, I stopped getting that daily email. And I remember interpreting that again, knowing what I'm being called to be and do, knowing what my own capacities are to be my own channel. All of us can be a channel of this higher consciousness. Every single one of us is wired to be able to do it. Um, I knew that that was a sign for me to, okay, time to take the next step towards more of finding what your take of this greater truth is, what your unique contribution of sharing this greater truth is going to look like. This is how Esther does it. And now you've had this assistance to sort of practice, practice the frequency, practice the feeling, practice experiencing what it looks and feels like to live this higher consciousness of one love. And now it's time to be less influenced by somebody else's take and to go the next step on your own take of living this at the next, you know, at that next level if you will. That's how I interpreted that shift. But I share that all simply to point out that the repetition is necessary. Very necessary. 
Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, power of female. I definitely want to touch upon that as well because that's going to be very relevant to next week's episode as I share a little bit more about the nuanced details of why I feel Iron Man fell in my lap and the tremendous opportunity of growth that that, you know, that that afforded me being in a highly masculine energy company and, uh, the work that we do, like very dominated more so by masculine than feminine energy. Yet the feminine energy is what, (laughs) is what I was intending to sort of shift my own focus being that I needed to balance out my own feminine and masculine to a very large degree. Cause I personally, uh, in no small way, I think because of my athletic experience really was more heavily dominated, um, in my life up until my awakening with my, with the masculine energy within me and my softer feminine aspects were not something I was necessarily as comfortable with. I, in expressing it and didn't know how to merge the two together. And it was a very not accidental, powerful, uh, experience to have the awareness, let alone to go into a world like Iron Man, knowing that I was personally in a process of really focusing more on my feminine. Um, so you know, and I don't, oh, I don't like that it's a grouping. I don't really prefer to speak of any groupings, but as I've mentioned in previous episodes, it's, it's just a necessary part of being human right now. And what we need is, in my opinion, the greater ability to be able to speak about things as generalizations at their more general levels, but then having the ability to provide the opportunity, the time, and the space to examine what somebody is outside of any stereotype or grouping or generalization that they may happen to fall under due to their personal appearance, due to their life experiences, due to any number of criteria that can be used to classify somebody. It's a, it's a matter of, you know, being able to to juggle all of it, being able to do both, to be able to recognize, you know, just like I did earlier when I said, Hey, this is a generalization of my experience of people in this age category. I'm admitting it's a generalization, but I always have the room and I'm constantly seeking opportunities to slow down and really get to know the essence of any one person. It's one of the things that I struggled with on the Ironman circuit because it's so hardcore, fast paced you know, and, and anything but a slowed down experience, allowing for the genuine connection of the uniqueness of another person. Hell, that's what, you know, again, another high level, big goal of my work is to create more and more opportunities where we're able to interact with one another as our unique vessels. Again, as the unique combination of all that has represented our life and constantly having different opportunities where, you know, you use the skill sets and interests from one particular time or job in this, you know, in a certain project. And then you have another opportunity in another project to use a completely different set of skill sets and experiences rather than the hyper-focused, highly specialized nature of careers. Um, that tend to be drilled in certainly highly educated people. So power of the female and this young woman is somebody that, you know, really, really represents, like I said, represents that to a very high degree. Even when you look at the field that she's in, um, you know, not many, when you look at rock groups and music groups in general, there are, if you did the math, 
there's going to be more men that you would find in that world, in that er arena of work than women. So she's in a minority simply because there are just more men out there making their lives as professional musicians, certainly in, again, that mainstream world, the radio, uh, the ones upon which you know, the radio tends to focus on. They tend to focus a lot more on the bigger names as opposed to independent, smaller independent musicians, where then you'll find, uh, I'm sure, lots more uh, females representing uh, that tier of musicians, if you will. And given my hope of supporting and, uh, you know, working to give more and more exposure to all the various musicians in my world, um, she represents a big connecting point in all of those, uh, in all of those ways. All right. Well, I think now this is a good opportunity to sort of, uh, conclude this week with a, uh, just sort of a summary as we quickly approach the final of these 12, first 12 episodes. Uh, you know, not necessarily entirely as clear as what perhaps I dreamed and envisioned when I first laid out the first 12 episodes. I definitely do not yet have um, even what I would say a, a decent sized group of energy tuning in each and every week, uh, which is an exercise in and of itself to be detached from the ego side of this, uh, because I'm not going to lie. It's definitely easier when people are interested. You know, I, I don't particularly need or want to hear myself talk. I'm really excited for these ideas and, and, and the things to which I'm giving voice. I'm really eager and ready and excited to put them into action and to play with them out in the world. But by virtue of, of what they are, they all require, others to sort of agree to see reality in a similar way uh, and or agree to see me in a way that, you know, not a lot of people have had the opportunity to see me in this more complete expanded version of myself because I, I wasn't even seeing myself in the light that I now see myself in until just a few years ago, relatively a few years ago. So it's, it's challenging to basically speak to myself each week, to not feel deflated when I see that there are still so few listening. Um, but I, I know, and I trust that all of that is intended to be part of the process. And it's a very powerful thing to detach from the reactions or lack of reactions for anything out there when we put ourselves out there. My goal is to concentrate on being the best version of myself with every action, every word to put that. That's what I've got control over. I don't have any control over anything outside of myself. And believe me, it is still a full-time job to create this sort of work and to catch myself when I get stuck, mired in sort of the old way of looking at something. And it, there's, I couldn't ask for a more uh, perfect way to continue to practice all of this than to have a podcast that nobody is listening to yet, but also simultaneously to be working, to be prepared for if and when the momentum of the energy begins to shift and build, because it will, I know it will. And when it does, this is not about feeding my story. As I've said before, my story is our story. And I want to take any increasing energy that's being directed at me, at words coming out of my mouth, at ideas being shared, at projects being initiated. The goal is to take that and immediately just use my vessel as a pass-through point, as a conduit, 
you know, if it's, if some, if some sort of attention comes to me and it's dark, I'm going to transmute it to light. If it comes to me and it's light and it's somebody trying to, I don't know, see me in a way that they don't see themselves. I'm quickly trying to guide that energy back so that person can see the light that I'm reflecting back to them. And then if people are actually giving energy, like in the form of a dollar of money, it's about taking that, that form of the energy and putting it back out into the world in these very different ways with very open, transparent, honest expressions. And again, working to just provide an A to Z example of how different we can create reality, how quickly it can shift, and how relatively simple it is to do. Like I said before, I cannot get any simpler than asking for somebody's dollar. A genuine, a genuine, hey, I want to see where this goes. Yeah, here's my dollar. That's all I'm going to be asking for this example. And the whole thing is going to begin to get unveiled and created with you, the listener, as we start with episode 13. And episode 12 next week will be implementing the two. Basically, if I get the opportunity to return to the Iron Man circuit, and if Iron Man has to change the way that they do business, which clearly all business is being forced in one way or another, to do business differently. I will have very real ideas that I present next week on how if the people that have the authority and the position to make decisions, if they want to choose to make that choice, I'm right there with a real idea and a real plan to implement it. And best part is not being attached to any of it. I'm not holding my breath on anybody agreeing to see me in a certain way, agreeing to see any of these ideas in a certain way. I don't, I'm not attached to it. I don't need it for my mental stability, for my happiness, for my fulfillment. But do I want it? Hell yeah. Of course I want to be out there co-creating with others that are, you know, as a as my best version of me and playing with others out in the world in the same way. Of course I want it. Of course I want to see a very different mass reality for the globe than what we see in the degradation of our environment and of so many individuals within that environment. Of course I want it, but I don't need it. And that's a night and day difference as well in terms of, uh, you know, what caused a lot of struggle for me prior to that spiritual awakening, when I woke up and remembered. Because as I said, the awakening is really more a remembering and the opportunity to remember that we came here to live in a very different way is right there for the choosing for each and every one of us. And if you don't want to, you've got that free, free will to make that choice as well which is the most fantastic aspect about this human experience. We have a choice. May not always look, certainly doesn't always feel like you have a choice, but you really do. And making the hardest choices often requires us to surrender control and to trust in something bigger than us and to have faith. Those are big asks for the vast majority of the planet still, but that is what's shifting. And like I said, I'm going to be here singing this song till I take the last breath from this body. And I'm going to be here living it to the nth degree because it just makes sense and it just feels like the right thing. Do no harm, follow love, and be honest. It's as simple as that. Thanks for listening. We'll talk next week.